Hello everybody and welcome to my Genshin Impact tier list of characters I absolutely am glad I pulled or that I definitely regret pulling. Now, the requirements to be on this tier list is 1. I must have built the character and used it a fairly reasonable amount. And 2. I must have intended to pull for the character and not accidentally pulled like a 4 star like someone like Yan Fei. Who you do get occasionally but I never built nor played. And with that said... There are a lot of characters in Genshin Impact that I have enjoyed playing and that have really added to my team and the different teams that you need to clear the Spiral Abyss and the other content in the game. But there are some characters that I do regret pulling just because they didn't pack as much of a punch as I expected them to and a lot of characters that I regret pulling simply because their gameplay wasn't exactly how I imagined it to be. So let's go and talk about characters that I regretted pulling. But, to start off, let's start off with Albedo. Now, I think Albedo goes into the B tier, a decent pool section. I use Albedo quite frequently. And the reason for that is because Albedo is one of those characters that is Geo, but isn't exactly dependent on Mono Geo to be in some good teams. He gives your team elemental mastery on his ultimate, which is really, really nice. And it's just a great character to slot in if you do not have a good third slot or do not have a good additional damage support for your team. And you're playing a team and you think, I don't really have a, another character for this. You just slot an Albedo. He will always deal good off-field damage, help you a little bit with his shield. And all in all, he's pretty fun to play. I also really like his visuals and having his signature weapon from the event really, really helps out. Now number 2 is Tartaglia. Now I brand myself as a Tartaglia main and I really enjoy Tartaglia and he has helped me out so much clearing Genshin Impact content. So obviously Tartaglia is going into the I'm super glad I pulled for him. I use him everywhere, I use him in the overworld, he is always in one of my Abyss teams because Tartaglia National is incredibly strong and all in all he's just such a versatile character. I really like a couple of points for him. His gameplay is good, his damage is surprisingly good, and his visuals are sublime. So he gets a definite S. Next up, Ayaka. Now, I pulled and built Ayaka, and honestly, for me, currently, she is going into the decent pool category. Now, this is because Ayaka is incredibly strong. Probably the strongest ice character in the game. But... I haven't been able to use her a lot. I do not have a lot of other good water appliance characters because I already have Tartaglia and for the rest I have Zincho. And thus, I have been having a hard time getting a good freeze team around her and she isn't exactly a character that you can just freely slot into any team that you come up with. And thus, she's okay. She's really fun to play on herself but her team variety is limited. And for that reason, she's a decent pool because I... Just can't use her so often with the characters that I have built. But let's talk about Beidou and specifically C6 Beidou. For me, C6 Beidou has been a good pull. Now why is that? I have been using Beidou a ton in Tartaglia Taser team. She is a great support for Tartaglia and for that reason I am really happy I got C6 Beidou. She just supports my Tartaglia really well and I really love playing Taser teams. Next up Bent. Now Bennett is going to be on everybody's tier list, but having a good Bennett, it's mandatory for your account. He heals, he shields, oh, he gives you an attack buff, and he is incredibly strong. Everybody knows why Bennett is strong. He's two characters in one. You get both a damage dealer and a healer in one, so he fills two character slots. And he is just one of the staple characters in the game. Now let's talk about the look. Now I didn't necessarily pull for the look, but I got a C3 the look. Just from losing 50-50s. And what do I actually think about him after using him? Now, this isn't a power ranking as someone like Ayaka is way above the look, right? But I just really enjoy playing the look. Uh, his fun part is really that his ability is a kind of a three-step ability. So you can smack a mob. Just run to the next monster and do your second part of your ability. It makes him feel fluent. His skin is a big contributor to my enjoyment of him, as his skin makes him feel a lot cooler and not a lot nicer, and I do really enjoy just playing him. He's mostly a fun pick. For hard biz levels, I definitely do not bring him, but I'm still working on making him a little bit better. 
than I currently have. He's a fun character, but not necessarily a character that I use to clear difficult content. Now let's talk about Diona. Diona honestly is better than a lot of people give her credit for, and having a C6 Diona is massive. You get bonus elemental mastery, healing, shielding, which is really important as some abyss monsters nowadays just evaporate your character instantly. And also, the cryo is really nice to freeze enemies so you have a little bit extra time to move. The additional EM is also great. And all in all, I use a ton because one team gets the bandit and the other team gets the Diona. In case, you know, ravenous wounds and you can't use someone like Zhongli. So she is a great flex build and she is definitely going into AT. Now, Eula. Eula is going into ST. I use Eula a ton, especially a lot together with the Raiden Shogun. Her physical damage is incredibly good. She is my highest hitting character in the entire game and just getting the massive numbers is really fun. I do like dancing around with the Greatsword as there's not many good Greatsword characters in the game anyway. So having a good Greatsword character is really really nice and it is kind of a blessing. And Eula is all in all just a really fun character and also pairs really well with one of my best characters that being Raiden Shogun. Next to that Taking out bosses, you can deal like a million damage with her ultimate. It is incredibly strong. And she isn't too bad to build with the artifact strongbox. Now next up we have Hutao. And I would like to preface that I have a C0 Hutao. Now I was incredibly excited about getting Hutao. But I'm gonna be honest. I am going to have to put her in BT. Not because I think the character is bad. And again, she does incredibly high damage. But at C0, the jump cancelling, it just makes her not feel very fluid. I feel like getting her to C1 is such a massive gameplay change. Because having to constantly jump and then get hit by a boss attack because you were in the middle of a jump. Or just take unnecessarily large amounts of damage because you were in a jump. Or just not jump cancel correctly. It's all a bit finicky. It frustrates me a little bit. I do not enjoy jump cancelling. And for that, it kind of ruined playing Hu Tao for me. I really wish I would have gone C1 Hutao instead of Homa. Uh, just because of the gameplay aspect. I don't like jumping. That is my major complaint of the character. I know you don't have to jump cancel to play her. Um, but if you want to play her efficiently, you want to jump cancel to preserve stamina. I am honestly going to try her again. I need to rebuild her. And play her without the jump cancel and see how I enjoy her gameplay then. Because... Maybe it's a lot more fluent because her dashing is very fast and her character design, 10 out of 10. Next up we have Kazuha. Now Kazuha is just a absolute carry in any of my teams. I don't think I've ever played a <laughs> Spiral Abyss or Open World event without slotting in Kazuha. He is incredibly strong, we all know what he does. He damage buffs, he groups, he is incredibly strong. But the best part about Kazuha is his flexibility. You can slot him in anywhere and also do we not all just enjoy the fun of gathering up enemies below you, launching into the air, and then plunging down on your enemies and just it, dealing a ton of damage? I love his character design. All in all, Kazus is a 10 out of 10 character. I think most of the Genshin community loves him just because how well designed he is. Next up, we have Zhengling. Now, as a Tataglia player, I'm just going to put her right next to him. Zhengling is a must have, but let's be honest here. Zhang Ling is fighting with Hu Tao for the spot of the best pyro DPS in the game. And that is kind of insane. For a 4 star, she does a gargantuan amount of damage. You can slot into so many teams. You can play National, you need Zhang Ling. You play Tartaglia, oh, Zhang Ling. She is in some of the most meta teams in the game. There's an absolute ton of characters. And Groba is kind of funny. So all in all, C6 Zhang Ling, you know, it's always worth it. Kang Ling is just one of those characters that is amazing. Next up, we have Zhao. And Zhao is going into the category of a good pool. I think I really enjoyed playing Zhao. Zhao is really fun. His ultimate animation is insane. And his damage is, of course, incredibly high. But he does have the requirement of being quite difficult to build to get those mega damage numbers out of. And all in all... I do enjoy his character a lot. And I do also enjoy the way that he plays in his fast and furious playstyle. Going quick, dashing around. He really encompasses what an Nemo character should. Now, going to the would not pull again section. 
I am very, very sorry. But I really regret pulling Jay Miko. To be honest, I am not that good of a Jay Miko player. But when she released, I thought maybe she has a very interesting kit. And you know, she, there is a lot of things to Jay Miko. But it kind of ends up being you put down three totems. Then you press your ultimate. Then you put down three totems again. And she slots into a lot more teams now, which is really, really nice. And I like her aesthetics. But her gameplay just never really synced with me i never really enjoyed it that much so all in all i would not pull yay miko again simply because she is not exactly what i was looking for in the character i was really hoping for something like lisa where you have to charge up a really big ability and then cast it and deal huge aoe damage instead of the finicky totem system that we got now i do have a c6 kujo Sana, and honestly for me she is going into the Glad I Pulled category. Now why is Kujo Sara going into the Glad I Pulled category? I use her a absolute ton. Because she goes really well with the next character. The Raiden Shogun. Now Kujo Sara and Raiden Shogun are just such a good combination of two characters. You deal a ridiculously high amount of electro damage. And I do like using Yamiko in this combination, right? But usually having three electro characters, it becomes a little bit too much and thus i really like playing the raiden shogun together with the kuju sara now raiden shogun has just carried me in abyss ever since i got her ages ago and she is just incredibly strong so all in all i really enjoy having my raiden shogun just be an absolute carry and also you get more energy more energy is more attacks and more attacks equals more gameplay more buttons equals more fun am i right next up there's c6 sincho Let's be honest over here. C6 Sinjo is one of the better water appliance units. But he goes really well into a lot of teams. And he is incredibly strong. But there is one step above him. Yelan. Yelan is such a good off-field water appliance character. First of all, her energy recharge build. She just constantly has ult up. With the E, you get a lot of energy bubbles as well for your other characters. And all in all, I just really like, first of all, her character design and backstory. And also her kit. Yelan works super duper well with someone like Deluke or thus Hu Tao. And you can also play her in fun taser teams, etc. You can also play her together with Sincho to have the mega water team. Which is incredibly strong and incredibly good. Now let's talk about Sucrose. Sucrose is one of the better F2P characters in the game and is really good for a Nemo appliance. But I specifically <laughs> pulled for Sucrose on a 5 star banner and honestly she goes into the decent pool category. I never used her that much as I already had a Kazuha and I feel like she is a really good character but personally she was kind of a character I pulled for specifically as she was incredibly hyped but already having Kazuha she didn't really get too much value out of me now Zhongli on the other hand I am incredibly glad I pulled for Zhongli let's just call it about this his shield is massive so any of the abyss monsters that hit for such a ridiculous amount of damage don't instantly one shot you his stun gives you a lot of time to set up some of your elemental combos so he, all in all he makes the game easier and making the game easier is really nice when spiral abyss is just insanely difficult now, Cookie Shinobu, I think, is a very good pull. Getting a C6 Cookie Shinobu, you can do so many good things with elemental combinations and dendro. So, all in all, I really like her elemental mastery build and her healing build. But my favorite build is to play her with Nahida and Tartaglia. And so next up, we are going to talk about Nahida. I think Nahida is also solidly sitting inside of the Astia. I am really glad I pulled for Nahida. She is an incredibly easy to use character, fun to use character, and is one of the best dendro enablers in the entire game. And thus, you can use Nahida an absolute ton. And she is a ridiculous amount of fun. Just seeing all the elemental explosions go off everywhere. All in all, I absolutely do not regret pulling Nahida. But a character I kind of do regret pulling is the one. Now, it's not because I think his character design is bad, because I actually really enjoy his design. His floating around is a ton of fun. 
His attacks feel fluid and are incredibly smooth and I really like his character design. But I have too many main DPS and he can only be played as a main DPS similar to someone like Shiro. And at this point in the game I just had to force out playing other teams to get to play my Wander. He is so not flexible in teams and is so the main character in any sort of team that you kind of have to play him as a main character and because of that I don't tend to play him at all because I rather have these combination teams and elemental reaction teams while the Wanderer team is really just about him. And I think his design is really really good but I like mixing up characters and the Wanderer just does not allow me to do that. But a main DPS that does allow me to do that is Sino. Now Sino isn't necessarily the best character in the game but he has one thing on his hand. He feels ravenous and he feels incredibly fun to play. Now all in all Sino is just really really good to play. He is a extremely strong character and just absolutely whoops enemies if you have him in the correct build. But not on the top of the meta in any way. All in all you play Sino for fun. If you like quick angry slashing around with your class. Sano is your boy. I do not regret pulling him because I love playing him together with my Nahida and my Yelan for some incredibly large reaction. I think this is about the list of how I have experienced all my different Genshin Impact characters. There's not a lot of characters that I regret pulling and the ones that I do regret pulling honestly I only regret because they didn't really fit my playstyle or because they didn't really fit my teams more than that they are bad characters. So all in all, I think Genshin has done a very good job designing their characters. And I cannot wait to see what new characters are going to offer me in the future. I hope you enjoyed this quick tier list and I wish you a very pleasant rest of your day.